our knowledge of the Force. But by our skills with a lightsaber. Knights and Sith Lords, and welcome to Star Wars Artifacts. My name is Dominic, aka Lordu, and today we'll be reviewing the Yoda Legacy lightsaber, as seen in episodes 2 and 3, as well as in the Clone Wars animated series. The Yoda lightsaber is sold since May 2023 on ShopDisney.com for 250 credits, or about 340 Canadian dollars. This does not include shipping if you live outside the US. You will also find it at Dakandar's Den of Antiquities at both Galaxy's Edge Parks for 230 credits. The release coincides with the 40th anniversary of The Return of the Jedi, which was released on May 25th, 1983. As you can see, it is not sold in the traditional gray box. Instead, it is offered in a bundle that also includes a stand, a blade, and a USB-C to USB mini cable. Enough talking, let's start the review. Let's start by taking a closer look at the box. As you can see, it is a good quality cardboard box with a magnetic flap similar to the one used for the Dark Saber and the Obi-Wan Kenobi bundled I reviewed in the past. In the middle, we notice the Rebel Alliance logo. Honestly, I was expecting the Jedi Order logo, but whatever. The green logo indicates that the blade color will be green. Once the box is opened, we can see the Saber in the middle along with the pieces required to assemble the stand. If we remove the top portion, we uncover the blade and the USB cable. Before we analyze the saber, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and smash the like button to help me continue my work. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links are available in the description below. Let's take a closer look at the saber. Master Yoda was not very tall, so it is easy to imagine that his saber was much smaller than other lightsabers. The legacy version follows that logic. Here it is next to the Skywalker lightsaber to compare sizes. If we want to go to the extreme in terms of comparison, here it is next to the most recent version of the Calcastis lightsaber. The hilt by itself measures about 8 inches. The difference in the diameter size is also quite considerable. The emitter has a brushed aluminum shroud that covers the back portion. The section located just below the emitter does not feature any detail on the front, but the back side has a decorative black button. In the universe, that button probably served as a blade length regulator. The activation button is located on the mid portion of the saber. We need to press the button to activate the blade. The green light located on the left side is simply decorative, but the one located on the activation button will light up when the saber is connected for a recharge. You will need a USB wall adapter since this accessory is not included. The grip is covered by four black plastic bands. You need to lower the band located on the back to access the USB mini plug. Be careful as the middle sides are very sharp. Obviously, it would have been unthinkable to use standard batteries because of the hilt size versus the battery compartment size. So, I'm happy to say that this link took the best possible decision to maintain the original look of the saber. If only they had made the same decision 
for the Dark Sidious lightsaber. The puddle has very few details, reflecting the minimalist philosophy of his owner. There are obviously a few vents under the saber to let the sound escape. The included stand is identical to the one sold with any other Disney Park bundles. I would have appreciated if they had downsized it to fit the scale of Yoda's saber. I really don't like the fact that we can see the acrylic standing out at the top of the saber. The arms are also too wide for this tiny lightsaber. As you might have guessed, I will have a custom stand similar to this one made for me with the Jedi logo in the middle. Since the saber's diameter is inferior to all other legacy lightsabers, standard blades are not compatible with it. This is why a special 26 inch long blade small enough in diameter to fit in the emitter is included in the bundle. The two metal pieces helping the blade lock in place are replaced by treads. This means that the blade has to be screwed to stay in place. When turned on, you can hear the actual sounds of the saber. When activated, you can see the green blade light up. From flash, the blade will flash. I must admit that I'm really impressed by the final look of Yoda's saber. If Disney had chosen a more conservative approach, the saber could have had a terrible look. But instead of choosing the easy option, the Disney staff decided to do the things the right way and the collectors are happy. What do you think of this lightsaber? Are you impressed by its size? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to share it on your social media. I'll see you next week for another review, and until then, may the Force be with you, always. Remember, the Force will be with you, always.